Hey there, Matt Wicks here at uh, the SSW TV booth at NEC Sydney. I'm here with Michelle Duke, uh, or Mish Manners, depending on how you want to be addressed. Either one is fine by me. <laughs> yeah, cool. Uh, we're talking about uh, GitHub, um, GitHub Projects, uh, GitHub Copilot. What's new with GitHub Projects? There are so many cool new things in GitHub Projects. In yeah. fact, the latest thing we just shipped was only a couple of weeks ago. So, um, I, yeah, like literally, yeah, three weeks ago. So, no one took um, holidays. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's it's interesting because so I did my talk on GitHub projects here at NDC Sydney and a couple of people came up to me afterwards and said, oh, isn't that a dead feature? It's something we no longer look at, right? And I was like, no, it's something that's being worked on actively. There's so many cool mm-hmm, things. Mm-hmm. Um, as I said, there's shipping new features too. And the way we use GitHub projects is so different and has so much more functionality than the previous what you might have remembered as boards, if you ever yeah, used. Yeah, yeah back yep. then. So we call it the classic projects now rather than old or boards. So that functionality has changed so much from classic projects to the new. So it's it's really, really cool. Yeah, like we're running a whole bunch of, uh, of our projects on GitHub projects. Yes. <laughs> and um, it's really cool because we've got like our, our board set up with columns and it's like, here, here's the, the ready column and, and then we can put the link for the definition of ready mm-hmm. in progress. It's, it's done, definition of done on there. So everyone's, you know, across that. And we've even got the, the roll up. So like all our estimates roll up. So we make sure it's like, hey, there's too many, there's no way we're going to ship this print. You know, we need to pull stuff out. So that's working out really well. But oh, fantastic. Um, what's, what else is new? Yeah, I can show you. I've got my computer here, so I can show you some of the new stuff if awesome. you like. So there's actually some really cool new ways to get to projects now. Mm-hmm. So this is just my GitHub profile. So there's a few ways I can get to it. There's one here. I can click my little profile button and go to um, projects. Yep. Um, if I'm on just like my profile here, I can go to projects and then it'll show me all the projects I've got here. Cool. But the new one is what we call global projects. So we can get to it from the side uh, button here, which means I can get to this from any GitHub page I'm already on. Um, whereas to get to this one here, I'd need to be on my profile. Whereas here, I can now it's get to projects every... pretty much anyway. Like, you know, we've got all the features here. So projects, discussions, code spaces, cool. copilot, which we can talk about later if you like. Yeah, yeah, that'll be good. So if we go to projects here and have a look, we can see this is all the current projects, all the 20 most recently viewed projects. I've been working on projects, so I've got a few to view. Yeah. Uh, the 20 most recently viewed projects um, that we've been that I've been working on. So this is... Really, really cool. Um, this is one I actually did my talk on. So you've been talking about using GitHub projects for like your work stuff, ongoing, right? Ongoing, like ongoing development. I'm noticing like straight away there's some stuff that looks different, like there's dates yeah. and so there's, little labely things. Yeah, exactly. So this is um, the the new overview. So if I have a look just at a glance, I can see how all my projects are tracking. Now you can see here I've got Moving House. So I do actually use GitHub projects, not just the work stuff. And it's it's actually really interesting to see how people are using GitHub projects for their personal projects and personal productivity, which is really cool. So if I have a look at this, this is just an added glance. So this column here is showing, that's pulling in that information where you put like the little description about your project. Okay. So cool. if I glance at this, I know we've got our moving date on the 21st of July. I know here we've got our wedding, or we had our wedding mm-hmm. on the, se- the 9th of December. Congrats. Um, thank you. Uh, then, then we've got this one here, which is the project board set up and by maintained by this and working towards our next release. Okay. So that's really cool. This next column here is status, and this is brand new. So this is the thing we just shipped on the 18th of January. So like really, really recent. So this is showing the status of the project. So when I, if I'm a project manager, this is really, really like... At risk makes sense there because that's like... Exactly. So I could look in here and go, okay, I've got 10 projects I'm working on. Okay, this one's at risk. Let's go in and have a look at what that project is. And I'll show you where those status come from in a moment too. Um, and these ones here setting up, um, that's pulling in from that new status button there. So I'm going to go to the Arcto Invaders because they've got more status updates than just my moving house <laughs> one. But I'll, I'll do one in my moving house in a minute. So if I have a look here, this is the status update here. We can see it's been updated two weeks ago if I hover over that. Now, if I click that, I can see all the previous history that this project has had in terms of status. So we've now got these new short descriptions and a little readme. So rather than just having the readme for your repository. The read, I think the readme used to be buried somewhere else mm-hmm. before. And it's good that it's a little bit now closer front to the and center. Yeah. Yep, yeah, that's really good. So you can see here, I can see who's posted the update. In this case, Riley, the project manager, 
uh, when it was last targeted, the new target date, okay. uh, the status, you know, what like a little description about it as well. Mm. So I can go, okay, we're now at risk. What's actually happening? Um, so we're going to say we were on track. So this is really interesting to see the history of, of this uh, type of project. So, for example, if I go back to um, my house one, and we'll come back to this Arctic Invaders one in America, it's really cool. Um, if I go to this one, this is where we have um, the status, and I can, like, add a new status update now. So this is my one, so I can add one. So say, I mean, it, it is complete, but let's just say if we're on track and we can change the dates of it, we can have a new target date, whether it's... Uh, in the future or the uh, past. Um, so we'll just go here and we can say uh, everything is looking good. And then we can save that update. And now when I click on the updates again, we can see we've had that original update there, Crippler is in the way there. So we've got this update, which was updated four, four days ago, and okay. now this new one. Um, so now if I go back to my global projects and have a look at all of them, we'll see that status has now changed to on track. So again, I can look at how everything is going. I can add updates. This is really good from not just a project manager perspective, but something I talk a lot about is collaboration across teams yep. um, and across disciplines. So not just the development team, but say, for example, GitHub projects and everything I showed even just now and in, in my uh, talk as well, there's no coding, mm -hmm. right? So... All the things I'm doing in terms of like opening up an issue, I can have a look at our wedding board if you like. So opening up an issue, like writing a note, writing all these things, writing task lists and things like that. None of that requires coding. So having everyone from all the different teams be able to see the project and see the status mm -hmm. of the project, I think is really useful. So say if you're in the marketing team and you have like almost got all the marketing materials ready to go for the launch, and before you do that, you're like, well, let's actually go and have a look at the status of this project. Oh, look, it's now at risk. So we're not going to ship at the time. So we can actually either hold off our marketing, we can spend more time on it. Like, I don't know, you probably can probably think of a few examples where... Well, we, we ran our conference booth through GitHub Projects. Oh, perfect. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and I you have... probably had all different people in the org on it, right? Like we had TV crew, we had devs um, making changes to apps, we had our marketing thing. We, just oh, too, that's so good to hear. To together. Yeah. No, it's so good though because like there's so many times I can think of so many examples where the marketing team has gone, oh yeah, we've just sent out the marketing materials and the dev team's like, no, we're behind. <laughs> or even vice versa where the dev team is like, oh, we're ready to ship, you know, we're shipping early and they're like, marketing team's like, oh, we don't have the materials or even like the legal team, we don't have the legal stuff in place, so we have to hold off. Having a project board where it doesn't matter what kind of experience you've got with GitHub, where everyone can see what's happening, I just think is such a, a valuable tool to have. Yeah, that's super cool. I, I'm kind of thinking like that, that really works for like end dated projects. And I'm mm -hmm. kind of thinking, well, if you're running sprints, maybe you put like the, the sprint re uh, review, mm -hmm. the latest sprint review in there, and then everyone can see it, you can see the history and um, different ways of using it. Mm -hmm. So it may not be you're like at risk isn't really a thing because it's like, hey, we're, we're going to the next sprint. Yeah, exactly, going but to the next one. you're like, maybe the, the last sprint was, was, you know, had a good, we had a good vibe about it. So yeah. we put that in there. And anyone can do a status update too, which is pretty cool. cool. And this is something that's kind of newish too, is like having all these, um, these breakouts. So we can see here, this is a table view. Mm -hmm. um, and we can see, this is broken out and we've spliced this out. So now we can actually start visualizing our projects much better than just the standard old style of a board. Just, okay, there's columns in here. I, I like the columns. I, I do like the columns too, which if you got if you like the columns, they're still here. Cool. So we can have as many. This is what I like about GitHub projects. We oh, can yeah, have as still, many. You've still got the roll up. Yeah. Okay. So we can have as many views here as we like and we can customize these views too. Mm. So you're, like, you're sitting there going, hmm, well, I might yeah, change the <laughs> way I do my projects now. So I can see there's so many different views we have. This, this is why I like using this board because this team has done a really good job at uh, doing a whole bunch of different custom views. So like team backlog, like if I'm in the squad team, I can see just what is assigned um, to my team rather than like seeing all the clutter. And then I can say, okay, well, I'm reliant on some of the things from the Tiger team, so let's go and have a look at what they're doing as well. Um, but yeah, I've, I like the board view as well. And then we can have the roll up too, as you said there. 
Um, we've also got one here. This is like the team roadmap. So mm-hmm. um, they've put in all these markers for alpha, GA, beta, which again makes sense for when you're doing like a, a product release or a, a new feature. But if you're doing a spread board, maybe you might have markers for um, when the updates need to happen. Or... or you may even have, hey, look, NDC is coming up. A whole bunch of developers are going there. We need to make sure that stuff's done before then because they won't be available for that week. Exactly right. And we've got like, you know, epic planning as well. So like the overview, uh, awesome. the, the priority one I like as well, which is pretty interesting. And we can just like so many different ways we can just get on projects now. Nice. Nice. That's really good. You've got like all these ideas like floating around in your head now. Yeah, don't you? yeah. like I'm thinking <laughs> we've, we've got a, a project template and it's like I got to pull in some of that stuff now. Templates. Yes. Templates are new as well. So if you have a org on GitHub, so if I go to, uh, I'm going to pick one of my orgs. So well, anyone can have an org on GitHub. Anyone can, can have an org on GitHub. Yeah. I'm going to go to this one. So I can now create um, project templates. Um, so if I go here and create a new project, um, and this one I've actually created it too, but if I go templates, then I can go and create a new template. So here's one I created earlier, but I can create a project template. So Anything I change here, so this is the table board roadmap, I could create all these new views and mm-hmm. add in all different things. And then, for example, if you have, you know, you need to do a booth next time and there's like some... That's exactly what we set up. Exactly. So that's really cool. So this is, you're able to do this at the org level. So yep. it doesn't matter which repo you use. Um, the other kind of newish one that we released as well, so templates have been out since uh, December. The other kind of newish one uh, we released is uh, just standard templates for anyone to use. Mm-hmm. So now when you start a new project, you are given this these options of some standard... Uh, Pretty vague uh, things. Yeah, which yeah. is really cool. So team planning, future releases, the, your you know Kanban board that you like with the, the board out there, bug trackers, iterative job. And so this kind of like helps people get started if you haven't kind of thought about it too much and gives you a, a bit of a starting block. Cool. I like the retro one as well. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. So it gives you like this and then say say if I create it, let's just create one. So agenda, what went well, what can be approved, action items. So this is kind of a like kind of standard one. You can see it doesn't give me a title because I can create that myself. And then it's given me some standard views as well. So Mm -hmm. categorize uh, feedback and also action items as well. So like they might be things that you might want to use. And then again, if you want to change these, you can, but it gives you a good starting point. Cool. Well, I can't wait to use those. Yay! I'm so excited. Awesome. Um, do you want to talk about Copilot? Yes, we can talk about some GitHub Copilots. Okay, because <laughs> Copilot's been sitting in that bottom right-hand corner, just like <laughs> going, you know, pick me, pick me. It has been sitting there. So uh, GitHub Copilot we can now use on the .com experience. That's an interesting one. Uh, a lot of the GitHub Copilot.com functionality is mm-hmm. available for enterprise. So now you can go in and uh, index your repository, so your work repository um, with GitHub Copilot, and then you can go and ask questions with it. Mm-hmm. Some things I do want to show you, though, because I think this is a little bit more interesting when it comes to coding. I mean, a lot of people have been using GitHub Copilot chat to kind of, like, explain their code and, you know, write some of the features. But what I wanted to talk about was uh, some of the things that you can, uh, I suppose, like, hack GitHub Copilot to okay. get the right answers, Right. So say if we're creating, this is interesting because it's actually got it sitting here from the last time I asked um, how to do it. So I'm going to copy that. But say if I asked um, GitHub Copilot, say uh, new, so new slash new is the command we use to create a new um, project. So say if I said create new space invaders game. Well, let's see what GitHub Copilot gives me. And so when you say new internet. project, is this like, this isn't a GitHub project, this is... No, this is a VS Code file. Um, and it's interesting that it's actually giving me it straight up. So um, what it's doing here is it said, oh, I'm creating a Space Invaders game that involves several steps. Here's a simplified version using Python's Pygame library. Now, there's a few things that are in this. So one, I haven't mentioned what kind of... Um, programming language I want this to be in. I haven't mentioned anything about um, what I want the game window to look like. It's kind of just spat out some code, um, which is interesting because, again, GitHub Copilot is an AI tool. It's constantly learning. Yep. So the first time I tried this, rather than giving me the code straight away, it actually asked me more questions. Okay. It asked me, okay, we can we can do that. We can create a game. What uh, requirements do you have for the game? What language do you want, do you want to write? 
So this is now kind of learning that most people, I guess, want to write games like this in Python. So it's now giving me the code. But imagine going to someone and asking for something and getting them to do everything in one go. I'm mm -hmm. thinking like, say you want to go on a holiday yep. and you're using a travel agent to book your trip. Okay. If you went to the travel agent and said, hey, I want to go on a holiday, a travel agent wouldn't turn around and go, yeah, let me book your holiday for you. Yeah, flights book, accommodation book. Uh, yeah, all done it here. And you'd be like, well, hang on. Where am I going? Yeah, where am I going, <laughs> right? What would a travel agent usually do? They'd say, yeah, I can help book a holiday. Where would you like to go? How long would you like to go for? Which hotel would you say, like to stay in? How many people are going? Mm -hmm. You know, they'd ask questions, right, to kind of clarify. GitHub Copilot does do that in a lot of cases. In this case, it's just given me what it thinks most people are asking for. So again, kind of like a travel agent, imagine... So what if you said, but I don't want to use Python? Yeah, so like, let's not use Python then. Yeah. So I'm going to copy and paste what... So if I say a new space in game, beta's game, let's write it in, let's say Ruby, let's not write it in Python. And I'm going to give it some more um, uh, information about what I actually want. So I want the game to be played on a browser in a game window, make the enemies red, the player blue, have a score count on the top left corner of the screen and put a border around the game window. So I'm being a Pretty much more... Yep. Yeah, so again, if you went to a travel agent and was like, hey, me and my um, my partner want to go to Japan, we want to go in two weeks' time, we want to go for three weeks, and we want to stay in Tokyo mostly, what's your recommendation? They go, yep. I can. So the more information you provide up front, right, the more mm -hmm. they're able to give you more recommendations. So let's cool. see what it says here. So it's thinking, again, the internet here, yay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... Creating it is a bit, this is interesting actually. So, so it's doing some rails. Yeah, so it's saying, and it's even acknowledged, like is a bit challenging because Ruby is not typically used for client-side web development. So we're getting some information about how we want to do this. However, you can use Ruby-based framework like Sinatra or Ruby on Rails, as you picked up, it's yep. doing Rails. Oh, to no, serve no, it's using Sinatra. Oh, it is actually, yeah, yeah. you're right there. And um, yeah, written in JavaScript to do this. So here's a basic example of how we might like to structure this. And then it's giving me the templates for each thing that I would need to do and the JavaScript file for the game as well. Mm. It even says, you know, in this template, and this is what I like about GitHub Copilot, right? It doesn't just spit out the code and say, blah, here you go. Same thing with a travel agent. It wouldn't just say, yep, done your tickets here you go. It would say, now I've booked you into this hotel. Um, it's a really nice hotel. It's got a pool and they do breakfast for you. Like mm -hmm, it kind of explain, mm -hmm. like the travel agent would explain what, you know. I hope so. You know, a good travel, a good agent, travel would, agent would, right? Yeah. So in this sense, a good helpful pair programmer is going to give me information that is helpful to what it's actually giving me. So it's giving me an explanation of what the code is that it's output. In mm. this case, the Ruby server serves a HTML page, includes a JavaScript game. The game would be written using a JavaScript game file like Phaser. Cool. Like, so we're getting a lot more information. This is what we really like about GitHub Copilot in the sense that it gives us more information. We can actually learn as we're coding, uh, which is really cool. Um, so now if we wanted to, we could create a new window and um, or new file and we'd drop those in by using the little comments here. Oh, okay. Kind of keep going with that. And we can then refine it and say, um, actually, Ninja, uh, okay, if Ruby isn't a good choice, what would you recommend? Well, so probably I'd recommend Python. Well, we started building some JavaScript stuff. So, so it might keep going with you. There you yeah, go. It's going to go with some phaser. There we go. Yep. Um, yeah, interesting. So you can serve, your... serve it. Serve it on a simple static file. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Makes sense. So yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So uh, another thing that's really cool is um, this like uh, suggested next question. So mm -hmm. how can I handle user inputs? If I click that there, um, you know, again, the things so it says you can handle it using this, this, and this. So again, kind of like a helpful travel advisor, like they would ask or prompt you with the next question, like. Uh, well, are you thinking of going on to Universal World or are you thinking of this? Like kind of uh, prompt you with more questions. Yep. Um, uh, there we go. <laughs> That's an Get itch. a guard rail. Yeah, so um, interesting one. So I can talk about this too if you like. So um, my GitHub Copilot is controlled by my org, in this case GitHub. And one of the filters we've put on our um, usage is that if a response matches public code, 
Um, and when it says matches public code, that's about 150 characters or more that's actually similar. Mm-hmm. Um, don't show it and then rephrase the prompt. Now, this is interesting because I recently did this one for a contact form and, yep. you know, how common a contact it's form. super generic. Very, very generic. Yep. Like yep. there's not really much difference. So it started writing it and then like filtered it out. So um, it's an interesting one, but it, it, it is really good for, especially if you're working on things that are a bit less common Mm -hmm. uh, and especially if you're working on like more proprietary code and like groundbreaking code you don't really want it to match anything vaguely that might already be out there so um, that one's really good Um, so what I wanted to show you next now that that's all um, nicely gone (laughs) um, is how we can kind of um, get around some of GitHub Copilot's um, constraints if you will um, so you, you were asked me before, you said, uh, Scott Hanselman has done a, de- a similar demo on this too, yep. uh, which is if we ask GitHub Copilot for something that is outside its scope, in this case, outside code, it often comes back with a... Because it's open AI under the hood. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So let's ask GitHub Copilot, um, I'm planning a... We already planned our wedding, so let's say I'm planning a honeymoon. Can you please help me with travel advice? Now, sorry, I can only assist with programming related questions, right? So GitHub Copilot is designed specifically for coding. So what if we said, I'm building, building, I'm building, building a website for travel advice. What should be on the home page. And let's see if it gives it to us. When building a travel, your home page should be engaging, informative, easy to navigate. Have some elements you should include. Um, here we go. So now it's uh, giving me lots of travel advice. Include links to important sections like destination, travel tips about us, contact us, etc. Okay. Now if we say, um, I love this, let's start building out the travel tips page can you give me some starting tips for the page and let's see what it says sure here's some tips for building out the travel it's categorized tips group your travel tips into categories um so solo travel family travel travel on a budget so you can see we can actually mm-hmm. get around um We're some starting, of these starting to, to get around it at least yeah. yeah yeah and so if i then start adding more information in um github copilot will um start understanding oh, this is really interesting so i always laugh every time i give demos like this because it's it always blows what's gonna happen, always yeah. blows my mind so it's actually come up saying what are some essential items to pack for a beach location as a <laughs> As we'll a it it. So it let's see. Didn't sound like it would do Sorry, it but I can use <laughs> program. But what if what if you're saying I need to put in some content for the what are the essential items to pack? For section? the essential items, oops, for a beach holiday page, do you have some tips? Oops tips not ifs so there we, there we go so here's a basic structure essential items for a beach vacation um it's even giving me images as well um for some of the things um you can replace the placeholders with your actual content for example some essential items for beach might include sunscreen a beach towel a swimsuit a hat sunglasses flip-flops a beach bag a water bottle and a good book hmm. so we can see we can actually get some of that information out of um github copilot and once we start adding more of our own content in there, um, that will come through. So say, for example, if you use GitHub Copilot with any kind of markdown files, yep. Yep, and you start writing, it'll start it filling the... It inf- seems to fill in some information of, from the actual project as yeah, well. Yeah, and that's because GitHub Copilot takes into account a lot of context. So last thing I will show you, because this one's really interesting about um, so the context. I think, I think with that demo you just did... Um, it didn't give us exactly the information, but if I'm on a project and I'm like I'm building up that page and I want to show it off, I think that content's better than just putting lorem ipsum because yes. it seems a little bit more contextual. That's right. And you know the whoever you're showing it off to, it's like oh yeah, they're actually 
it's get some there. of my things. They, they understand the, the problem space. Yeah, and so once you start um, adding in some more information, GitHub Copart has that context. So it will start. So if you had, um, like for example, when we were building the website for our wedding, mm-hmm. we started typing in some of the information about RSVPs and essentials and things. It's filled it all out because it understands that we're building that um, that website. It's got that content. It does have that in the back end, even though it says it's uh, just about code. Um, the last thing I want to do is show you the type of context that GitHub takes into account. Because a lot of people say to me, well, it looks like chat GPT can do a lot of the things that GitHub yeah, Copilot can. And it can. And that's because chat GPT has been trained on everything available on the internet. Now, we know that code is on the internet, Stack mm-hmm. Overflow and all these other kinds of things. So chat GPT can actually provide you with mm-hmm. uh, code that you can use. Um, one thing about that is that it's in a different place, right? So we know developers like to work and code within the same environment. That's one of the reasons why they're so happy about things like GitHub Copilot when you don't have to go to Stack Overflow. You can ask it within your workflow. So with ChatGPT, you do have to flip back and forth between that. Uh, Second thing, ChatGPT hasn't been optimized for code. So it has been trained on everything available on the internet. So it does understand code, but it hasn't been optimized for it. So it doesn't necessarily understand all the nuances that whereas copilot can look at vs code and go hey that's a razor file Mm -hmm. i'll look at all yeah that's right and secondly github copilot has much more context than chat Mm -hmm. gpt so the only context chat gpt has is all the training data which is obviously a lot of context but it has all that training data as its context and the prompt that you give it that's the only context that it has Whereas GitHub Copilot has so much more context. So if I've got the chat window here, it has anything that I ask in here is context for GitHub Copilot to take into account. It's even remembered your last conversation. It does. So it does remember the conversations I have. Um, So that's here. You know, we've asked about the beach and the the game and things. So that's all there. But anything I write in here is context to GitHub Copilot in the similar way chat GPT has. Mm -hmm. But again, GitHub Copilot has the rest of this context. context. So... It has the context of the files that are open here. So again, cool. as you said, it can look at this and go, oh, that's, that's Blazor. We can, we can do that, right? So any files that you have open in your tabs across here, so this one, the CSS and the index, these are all GitHub Copilot can see them. Mm-hmm. It, ha- it knows exactly what is written in those files. So it can take all these things into context. So if you're working on something in, and it doesn't just have to be VS Code, if you're working in your IntelliJ, Um, You can have that open as well. Um, But so if you have those tabs open, GitHub Copilot, both the chat experience Mm -hmm. and the inline experience has that context. So it can read those files. So sometimes people start typing, they're like, it's, it knows what my names or what my functions are. Yeah. It's like, yeah, because it has that context. ChatGPT doesn't have that type, type of context. So it has that context. The next piece of context it has is the files here. So okay. your project, usually you have a project file um, folder open. Mm-hmm. So whilst it can't see specifically what's in each file, unless it's open in the tabs here, it can still see the folder structure and the names of all the files. Once you have the name of a file, you usually have what the functions calls. You have that as context, but you have the language because you have the extensions here. And so, if you name things properly, like, well, not properly, if you name things really well, um, it, I, I, I'm assuming it can kind of infer what, what it's meant to be. So if you had like a... Um, index.html well yeah that's one one example i was thinking like a button or something like a named yeah like you know um if what, what's what's a site um ask questions related to building hot rods yeah this is yeah <laughs> no, this isn't interesting but like it can see everything here so i can see that you know the hot rod production here you can see that there's a program S, uh, cs file here i can see that we've got these error pages and different types of mm-hmm. um pages here so i can see that but the you can website. see all your components as well. Yeah, I can see the components as yeah. well. So as I'll say, if I go up here I can, and I have images, it can see you know, the names of those images and what I've called them. So that if you're, um, say, for example, if I didn't have the CSS file open and I was building the HTML, it would write the correct name of the CSS and the correct location of where it is because it mm. can see the folder structure. So it has all that extra context that chat GPT just does not have. Um, and I think... Even if it didn't have that, having it built within your editor where you're working mm-hmm. is just 
so much better for workflow. I'm kind of thinking like if it's got the CSS file and you're importing Tailwind, it'll start suggesting Tailwind classes mm-hmm. as opposed to suggesting Bootstrap classes. Yeah, exactly awesome. right. Yeah, that, so saves, that saves time. It does. It saves yeah. so much time and being within um, the environment that you want to work in, mm-hmm. like that's just so good. So um, GitHub Copilot is available on VS Code, in IntelliJ, um, Visual Studio and JetBrains. Um, for the GitHub Copilot, so that's that inline um, yep. suggestions. GitHub Copilot chat is currently only available in VS Code and Visual Studio. Okay. Um, there's a wait list available for JetBrains, so it's coming to JetBrains, and we're not sure when it's coming to IntelliJ yet. But it's um, the fact that it's... So when you say JetBrains, you mean like Rider? Yeah, Rider and PyCharm and things like that. Cool. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Can't wait. I know, it's been so good. Like, uh, yeah, just one quick example. Like, yeah, we built the website uh, for our wedding. Took mm-hmm. me a total of about eight hours using GitHub Copilot. Probably would have taken me way longer. I'll show it to you really quickly because it's... Or uh, you'd call up simple. friends and get them to do it. Well, I mean, I'd call up friends and get them to do it, but you kind of <laughs> want to build stuff yourself, right? Um, I mean, build yourself with GitHub Copilot. But, you know, we're able to build this relatively quickly, having full like, you know, light and dark mode. Um, we did have a countdown timer on here when it was our wedding, which GitHub Copilot suggested. It was like, hey, would you like a countdown timer on your wedding website? Why not? Sure. Would you like a light box with, you know, different photos and stuff? It's like, sure. Like, you know, I was able to suggest these things mm-hmm. and it probably would have taken me about two weeks to build the website. Or you may not have even with, thought of those features. Well, I definitely wouldn't have thought of the features, but yep. even to build the basic website, it still would have probably taken me about two weeks. So I was using GitHub Copilot, eight hours. Nice. So it just saves so much time. Um, it suggests features that you might not have thought of, and it just is it's just so cool. You learn so much while you're doing it too. Yeah. Yeah. I Look, I use it um, to do a lot of, like, a lot of coding. So I'm sold already. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this has been great. Thank you so much for having so, me. Thanks for coming really on. Fun. Yeah. Yeah. So this is um, Mavix from SSWTV signing off. Thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs>